Hello my friends and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood. Hopefully today we can finally officially arrange our meeting with Lord Hian. It's been quite a while. I mean, way at the beginning of the expansion, Yugiri and Gosetsu left in order to find him and we're just now technically about to find him. Although Yugiri has at least spoken to him. So at some point before this, so. Okay, so we do have a map. I know I keep really harping on about this, but... Okay, I'm not even looking at you, Gary, as she just addressed me, but okay. Um, but it seems it, we only have a map when it's convenient for the game to tell us we have a map, and it just leaves us at every other time. And it's a really crappy map if, if things aren't, you know, labeled properly, you know? So yeah, we gotta take her on the long way because our map doesn't display Z coordinates, unfortunately. And since I know what I'm doing, well, for the most part, I know how not to get lost trying to find him. So, even though it seems like he's in the marketplace, he's actually not. But he is overlooking the marketplace. Hi, Mom. Okay, appears he might be meditating or something like that. Else he might have seen us down below and being like, Oh, hey, you, Gary. Hi, how are you doing? Go, Setsu, good to see you. None of that, so. The Kami are merciful. My lord Hien, I see you are alive and well. Ah, oh, you are come sooner than expected. So, my blade or my head, which would you have of me? The people of Yansha remain loyal to Doma. I have seen the fire in their eyes. They are ready to rise up and fight. The time is ripe, my lord. Return with us, blade in hand, and lead Doma to freedom. Not less than liberty will suffice, then. A pity. It will prove far more difficult to deliver than my head. But if my people wish to pursue an impossible dream, then who am I to deny them? You giddy! Go, Setsu! And, uh... The Scions of the Seventh Dawn, my lord. Good and true friends who opened their hearts and homes to us when we fled to Eorzea. Far across the sea they have journeyed to stand with us in the fight for Doman liberation. To oppose the Empire, as they have in the West, where they are lauded as heroes for their many deeds. Say no more, you giddy. Say no more. I observed how you helped Sirena, to whom I am deeply indebted. For that and for the aid you provided my people, you have my deepest gratitude. So you knew we were down there and you didn't bother to shout a hello. You are silly. Also, can we be on a first name basis? There is no doubting your strength, nor your character. It would be my honor to fight by your side. So, what of Doma? Arise, my friends, and tell me of our home.
I have made my decision. You, Giddy, I bid you return to Yansha and take charge of our forces in preparation for my homecoming. As for our esteemed guests, I would ask that you remain here with me. I sense you will be a great help in the coming days. Your will is my command, my lord, but how much longer do you intend to stay? Oh, only until I have won the contest? I mean to return at the head of a Zayla army. Um, that's a bit of a lofty promise. You mean to participate in the Nardum? Have you a better idea? Consider how soundly we were defeated before. The Imperials may have since grown weaker, but we are weaker still. It would be folly to challenge them without first supplementing our forces, so yes, I intend to win the Narden and enlist the aid of every able-bodied Zaylor I can. Furthermore, by championing the Mole in the contest, I can at last repay their kindness. Lest you forget they saved me from certain death, and a man who suffers such debts to go unpaid is without honor and unfit to lead. You guys remember way, way back when, um, Yugiri repeated much of the same words to us after we, you know, extended hospitality to the Domans and we kept telling her, no, no, everything is fine, you know, like, we get it. And she's like, no, no, this debt is not going unpaid. <laughs> just so, just so. Our Lord has spoken, you giddy. But take heart, I shall keep him safe. And should it come to it, bring him back by force. Piggyback ride, please, please. Voting on the piggyback ride. This is no laughing matter, Gosetsu. But if these are my orders, very well. Once more, I place my faith in you. Pray look after them both. Looks like it's up to us then. Though it does seem a bit risky. Isn't Hien meant to be the next King of Doma or something? So they say. Though in truth I am but a pale reflection of my late father. All the more reason to entreat your assistance. For ours is an impossible dream. To set in motion a revolution that will rattle the very firmament and shake off the yoke of the most powerful empire in the world. Hell yeah! So, yeah, much to my disappointment, Yugiri is not going to be joining us in any further action on the step. And I find that really sucks. Um, and this is going to sound kind of backhanded for stuff I'm going to go through later. But it's kind of a wasted opportunity. Like, we're in the place of the Zela, which we haven't really seen much of before. Um, we've seen a few randos, mostly in Idleshire, actually. But besides Sui Nasato, we haven't seen any rain everywhere. We have not seen a rain in a Zela in pretty- in interacting in the same damn room before. And I want to see, like, the result of such meetings. And we're never gonna, without Yugiri here, we're never going to get that. Especially with some of the things that are gonna come up later in, in the step here. It just screams, just completely wasted opportunity. And there were so many character, character bits and lore bits they could have done with it. And they just completely threw that out the window. Especially since Yugiri is still very hurting for character development, considering how long she has been within the story. And basically, what do we know about her? Okay, that she was born in the Ruby Sea and she's been living in exile ever since she snuck out you know, made a friend and learned to apply to Doma and wanted to help them. And that's about it. Hey, 
It just feels kind of a disservice to her. You know? Okay. So yeah, um, we're, we're missing a couple details in, in this whole thing. So basically what they've told us so far, and I am not up to snuff on my Mongolian culture or terminology or anything like that, but Basically, at the end of a certain season, calendar time, whatever the hell she just mentioned, they pretty much have a grand battle royale, and whichever tribe wins gets to be the boss until the next one. But sadly, we don't know the details of what this all entails. Like, does, does the tribe in charge have absolute power? Like, what? Like, he and is under the impression it's gonna get us a massive army and that his, is his intent to, you know, drag this army back into Doma and being like, hey, Empire. You know. Um, granted, we, we, we will learn a, a couple little more minor details about that, but... For an early explanation, yeah, it's not very good. And I level up by walking across a bridge. <laughs> okay, um... Wasn't expecting that. Yeah, let, let, let's meet her, because Serena keeps saying some stuff about Grandma having visions and stuff, and talking to the gods and stuff. What does all this actually mean? I mean, we're in a new place with entirely new, peop new, new kind of people, but we don't know anything about their religious and or spiritual customs. Oh yeah, these people are wearing uh, a deeper red and not the pink that Serena is wearing. But yeah, in case you haven't noticed by now that the tribes on the step are all color-coded for our convenience. And... I'm slightly bothered by this. Um, in one sense, it's convenient for gameplay. In another sense, you know, every tribe is, is seemingly going to have their own traditions and um, expressing that by way of, well, fashion. Even if it's more for, you know, even if it's not quite fashion in the sense of, of vanity, but, you know, um, there are you know, cultural and tribal importances in, in various parts of the world to, to your forms of, of dress and everything like that. But what disappoints me, and I'm going to blame this mostly on gameplay mechanics, um, so that's why I'm not completely, completely bothered by this, is everyone is dressed exactly the same, um, with very, very few exceptions. And I kind of wish they had uh, varied it up a bit. Like maybe it's their color or only certain designs of 
their clothing that are of importance to them, you know, like enough to be able to identify them from afar, but not so much that they all just end up looking like clones of, you know, of each other. Um, because it just makes, basically just makes them all blend into one another and it makes me care less about them. And you don't see really such a problem with, you know, other NPCs. Like if you compare the people of Yangsha, for instance, a lot of them are wearing, you know, mostly similar types of clothing and like they're all farmers you know it makes sense that they would be all dressed similar but they all had you know slight variations in in the style of dress and the color of dress and everybody just wasn't a clone of the 30 other people around it here they suffer from that problem yeah we did he's right outside um guys guys do you, you want to come in we're about to meet Grandma here, and the door's closed, and I feel a bit rude. I know you said you wanted me to take the lead, but... Tamarun Hatun. Serena. I am returned. Ah, oh, you found each other. Ours is the soil, Hian. The Domans. And the Eorzeans, too. How does everybody know we're Eorzean? Like, I, I still have to ask that question. Is is Eorzean just some kind of racial trait despite, you know, it's, um... Racial diversity, I guess, is the best word for it? I don't know. Um... <laughs> you know us. The gods know you, child, as do the stars in the heavens, which shone bright at your coming. The mole hearken to the whispers of the elder gods, which guide us in our daily lives. We know them through the Utun, like my grandmother. Hatun. I am come to beg a boon of you and yours. That I might liberate my homeland, I seek to rally the strength of the steppe. To that end, I wish to fight in the Nardom, as a warrior of the Maw. Will you grant me this honor? To stand with the Maw is fruitless. Hian, do not do this. The gods may have willed that our tribe join in the Nardom, but... There is no path to victory. We are weak and our numbers few. Even with your help, it would be impossible. Mayhap not with mine, though. I thank you for your concern, Serena. But it is precisely because of the seeming hopelessness of your cause that we must needs cast our lot with you. Were we to join hands with a more favored tribe, our victory would inevitably be attributed to them. And no one would follow me to Doma. Twas the gods' will that we fight. Mayhap this too is their design. Hear me then. As Hartun of the Mall, I invite you all to join with us in the Nardom. Well, that was easy. Will you look after them? Come with me, friends. There is much I would show you. You... wait. I would have words. Um, okay. A singular radiance, shimmering, like a jewel of the Dusk Mother, blinding in its brilliance. Stars flicker and flock to you. Before such gathered light, even the secrets of the gods may be laid bare. Some are fated 
to rise in grace and glory. Others to falter and fade, though not from memory. Both will be your strength and salvation come the end. Cherish the stars, and the light they bring you in the dark. For you are a traveler, are you not? Okay, we need to get Uriage and her into the same room. Um, because that would be quite the interesting conversation. Because, yeah, I got, like, nothing out of that. Um, so, yeah, it would seem this tribe shtick is, uh, they listen to the Elder Gods, apparently. Um, who these Elder Gods are, um, is unknown and, frankly, just not important enough. But, uh, Grandma over there is apparently some kind of seer, I guess. Like, kind of like the medium between the tribe and the gods. So that's kind of something new and a bit interesting. We haven't re I don't think we've really seen such fervent religion outside of, say, the beast tribes and their worshippings of the primals and things like that, so... I have to say, even though this kind of stuff is beyond me, um, I am intrigued nonetheless by this. So apparently it seems that the gods have willed them that this tribe, even though they seem to be lower on the pecking order of the steppe, that they participate this year. And Grandma seems to think that, hey, our, well, at least he ends, desire to participate, and the gods, you know, willing that they participate this year, or this time around. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's a year or whatever. If someone could fill me in on that info, that would be fantastic, but we're just going to call it a year just for simplicity's sake. And you know that maybe this isn't a coincidence at all, which Okay, none of those are weapons I need. Um so maybe this is all fancy coincidence or maybe this is indeed fate. So even though she doesn't really know the rest of us, apparently all of us are now honorary tribe members, um, which which is kind of cool. But do I get a fancy piece of paper saying I'm now wards, friends, allies, um, something of yours? I mean, I got that in Ish card. Like, is, is there a green card system around here or something? Yeah, it's about every crap of the course every day for me, so. Oh, wow. We're gonna get fed and everything! Oh, the mall are so great, you guys. I have to say, I love that little proclamation. Um, it's just, it's just great. It's, it's, it's an interesting way to, to phrase it as, you know, you have to actually go and, you know, go after stuff. You can't just sit there salivating over, you know, your food. You, you know, you have to actually eat it. And it's a euphemism that can be that can be applied to many things, not just eating, but and I'm sure that's the intent, but it's it's a rather blunt and interesting way of looking at it.
Well, apparently we must have had name introductions off screen or something because this is the first time Lisa's name has been mentioned um, since we got, like, got to reunion, I think. Oh, do I, do I have to slaughter things? Like, I still have nightmares over that time. I had to go get a shiny rock from Spring and Entrails, so... A little squeamish about this. Well, if we're gonna be honorary tribesmen and women, I do suppose we need to kind of earn our to keep and actively participate in daily tribe chores, responsibilities. Yeah, we'll go with that. Responsibilities. We're members now. We need, we, we need to actually have jobs too, you know, guys. Game? Well, hey, well, well, hey, hey, what, 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 what if you get a fatter one, though? That's just luck, then. We're just going to ignore the person in the regalia sitting in the middle of a plateau here. Nah, they said they said flowing waters. That's not quite flowing waters. Let's go around the long way. And we're like we said, it's flat except where it isn't. And here's where it isn't. And Deadly Terror Bird, if you could kindly not. Thank you. This place far enough away. No, dang it. No, go to the yes button. So apparently I even make a little um, display for them. Wow. Is this part of their tradition? Like I, w I would have thought we just put it on the floor. <laughs> I got two to come out with one single sack, Ian. Take that. Oh, I got three this time. He and you are so going to lose. Alright, let's see where else. Hmm. This bird of terror would kindly flutter on in the other direction. That would be nice.
there's here's some flowing waters. So this seems like a good spot. Yeah, <laughs> three more. Come at me, bros. All right, so before... Well, it seems we made it back to Gosetsu first, but who has returned with the greater bounty is a question that remains to be answered, and answer it we will next time. So, thank you for watching my friends, and I shall see you then. I can't wait for this feast.